do you know what? You can do this. Just get out there. Anyway, I remember sitting around all day long. It's the longest day of your life. Half seven at night, that race was. And you just, it just feels like, I don't know, two weeks almost. And I sat around, chatted to people. You know, some people have already finished. They've been out partying, all these sorts of things. You're trying to focus. Uh, I remember going down to the dining room, thinking, right, this is it. This is the meal that's going to get me round the track. Could I eat it? Not at all. My whole tummy was a complete knot. I'd been to the toilet about 20 times that morning. I just felt sick. It just everything. It was like, oh my God. I think I force fed a banana and a bit of bread, and that was it. And I just thought, Do you know what? It doesn't matter. You've eaten well. You know, you had a great meal last night. You've had breakfast. It doesn't matter. So that process was happening. Anyway, I started to get myself ready. And it's quite nice when you get yourself ready because us ladies used to spend two hours getting ready and the men couldn't understand this whatsoever anyway so blow dried my hair did my nails full makeup 90 degrees out there so it's sweating like anything <laughs> doesn't matter i was ready i was confident i think the guys probably probably don't even have a shower in fact they probably just put their little shirt on that's been screwed up from the heats before stinking put it on and go anyway I was ready I walked out of the door and I was going to meet my coach Bruce I'd been with since I was 14 on the bus and I just happened to bump into Linford Christie who was there dangling his gold medal was his gold medal he was dangling I'll have you know and he said to me this is true. He said, where are you going to be sitting on the plane on the way home? And I'm like, what? How random is that? Is he not going to wish me good luck or anything like that? And he said, come on then, where are you going to be sitting? He said, are you going to be at the front with us gold medalists? Or are you going to be at the back with everybody else? And I remember thinking, I am not going to let that man have all his own <laughs> way here. Um, and that's where, you know, you surround yourself with the right people because he put me in the right frame of mind. I went marching to that bus like that. Anyway, I got up onto the top of the stairs and I could see Bruce sitting at the, at the back of the coach. And the first person I see, and I don't know if you remember, she was in that video, Sandra Farmer Patrick, black American girl, the perfect specimen of an athlete that I'd been told. You know, you have to be a hurdler, you've got to be six foot tall, you've got to be tall and skinny, and there's me. Anyway, so um, I walk up and there was no love loss between us two because uh, we had a bit of a ding dong in the world the year before. She hadn't talked to me probably for about two years. It was all that. There was a massive rivalry, you know, and, and she was probably the one that got me out of bed in those rainy mornings when I'd really questioned it and got to about four o'clock in the afternoon thinking I'm not going to train today I'm not going to train today and then four o'clock I thought she'll be out there training so I'm going to get up and I'm going to train so there she was and I can tell you the look the daggers that this girl gave me she sort of looked me up and down like this kissed her teeth and tutted like this <laughs> And, like, and I was thinking, oh my God, what have I done wrong? And you know, because it probably isn't my character. Uh, and then all of a sudden I thought, come on, you can do this. And you know, sometimes you've got to portray confidence, even though inside you're a complete wreck. So I did, I put my shoulders back, looked her up and down like that, strutted down the bus like I'd never done before and sat down. I remember Bruce going, you all right? Like, yeah, I'm fine. 